it from a lot of players. We're on? Oh my God, it's disgusting. We are on. People get mad at me for eating on the show. And I, I sympathize with them. I caught it once and oh my God, it's disgusting. And the worst <laughs> kind, the worst kind of chewing is what I'm doing right now. The Hershey bar chew. Uh. It's, oh my, it sounds like I'm chewing a mouse with mayonnaise on it. <laughs> of all the comparisons. <laughs> that's how hypochondric always sounded. That's, he that's, was a man just, of, that's a man who's been homeless. <laughs> he was hypochondric, by the way, the great Russ Maneve <laughs> and uh, Dan. There are a few things I both enjoy and get depressed at more than Dan setting up on the road for a podcast. Oh. <laughs> I mean, the, 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 the effort that goes no. into something that so little will hear. You know, he's sitting on the edge of some sort of uh, 1960s <laughs> thing that Bernie Mac would own. And uh, as soon as a black guy gets money, he buys one of those chairs. <laughs> and then he's broke. What's going to be worse is the sad breakdown of the equipment. <laughs> sadly and slowly. I know. When we're, we left, he's like a roadie. <laughs> <laughs> Hardy's in his room sleeping up. God. The sad, lowly breakdown. 600-pound hooker. <laughs> uh, the, 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 honestly, Detroit took care of me here. Oh, holy shit. This is the nicest hotel room I've ever fucking Can been in. Can I just in. say that this is the nicest room with the out... It looks like fucking Hiroshima 1945 <laughs> outside the window. It really looks like... You know what it looks like? Yeah. It looks like where if you... Piss off Vladimir Putin, you live here. <laughs> you will go to the Ukraine. <laughs> but the, it, mo the most gorgeous room looking at it. It Beautiful. really is. It's like a silk cat on several pigs. <laughs> Dan, where are you going? I, I, Dan, I can't tell you how. He's going to whack us. It's almost like, it's almost like we've never met. <laughs> He was, I thought there was, I was looking for the plastic on the floor. I thought you were going to kill us both. Th think of what he just did. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything. I, I, I made a New Year's thing. To <laughs> you, you took a picture of that. Like, why? And you're behind me. You know, I hate that. It's like, I feel like Joe Pesci before that scene. Like, you're like impending doom. What, 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 what? 7,000, I charge you. This is seven fucking big ones. This is, uh, why did you get up and do that? It's like over at me. <laughs> We've well, talked we about talking. people will ask. Yeah. Well, ask what? Well, what I was commenting on about the window. You as well. About Russ, the... Russ, believe me. No, okay. no one is going to ask. Right. <laughs> Who's going to ask? Vinnie Monroy? I love Vinnie, but Jesus. <laughs> no. Who's asking? Monica? Steve Torelli will say, you know, the show was great, but if you'd have taken a picture of the guy from the 600-pound life, that would have been great. Yeah, right. <laughs> so you take his critique. First of all, never take the, the mic away from Russ. <laughs> That's all right. I mean, you know, <clears throat> you're not on air yet. <laughs> we don't have the union dues. <laughs> no, honestly, we, we should take Dan. Take a picture of this. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> no, it looks like the Jetsons or something. Yeah. Uh, 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 you know a what? Out of date. But, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, no, but you see, I think they're trying to be hip, ironic, in date. Yeah. Well, and I think you've skewered it properly. Yeah, it's a solid miss. All it needs is a comedian. You, you imagine how long, <laughs> how long, like they thought about this, spent the money. Uh, Russ sits down, solid miss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not working. <laughs> that's like, that's like, I thought about movies the other day. I was thinking about the horrendous reviews that movie with Spade got. I was telling you. Mm. Uh, and the title of that movie again? Say it again? The, Lost the and title? Found. Lost, Lost and, found. and Found, yeah. Which was Spade's career for a while. <laughs> uh, and uh, no, he's, he's one of the funniest human beings I've ever met, David. And uh, we saw him recently at the Beverly Hills Hotel, right? With uh, I was with Dan, and he was with, uh, I think, Miss uh, November. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's amazing. Show business is amazing. It is. I was with Mr. Tweak It. Huh. <laughs> I was with Mr. We just we just about got it. Testing, testing. <laughs> Wait a minute. Here, here, here. We've got it. Uh, Dave, can I get a picture of you and the girl? <laughs> Spade was like, who's this? Who's this? Uh, so, uh, yeah. Uh, and how long it takes to make a movie? Think about it. Like, I think Spade and the guy he wrote it with, which I think was a guy he owed a favor from high school. I don't know. Mm. Uh, it, Okay, couple of years um, to just write it, concept, write the script, mm -hmm. and then you got to get somebody, go around, pitch it. Because even if you're a celebrity, you can't get the money. You get the money, you somehow find the right people. It takes forever. You got to somehow hire me. That takes three days. Uh, get <laughs> and it. it landed her. She was no, you know, Sophie Marceau, slouch. right. Sophie Marceau, Bond right after, uh, she, was, she had just done the Bond thing, and right after uh, well, Braveheart. Oh, she plays amazing. the fucking queen in Braveheart. Monster role. Yeah, and every day, again, I was telling Russ, I, I sat next to her in the makeup trailer, and, you know, she was looking at me like, I'm trying to think of the, the expression. 
uh, again, George Bush after they told him the second plane hit. <laughs> that look on his face. Like, imagine, that's how she looked at me every day. <laughs> or, or if you just told, if you, you told somebody there was a nuclear holocaust the first time they walk out the door, that's what she was looking at. <laughs> Broken, uh, you know, uh, water veins. And she could take a Polaroid if she rolled out of bed with a hangover and right. you could put it on fucking Vogue. And uh, that was the movie. Okay, too much to shoot the movie. Edit the movie. Think of the right f- yeah. <laughs> release date, and then, and then it comes out, and some fucking guy who's been out of UCLA for three years working at Entertainment Weekly goes, uh, "It doesn't work for me." C minus. Yeah, that was. <laughs> and, then, and then everybody moves back to Indiana. <laughs> <laughs> the kids. T- I think the Did kids. Did they make been- any money in that movie? Oh God, no. nothing. <laughs> Not in the sense of profit. You th- <laughs> if you mean if you mean it took in more than a cost, no. <laughs> fucking sea of red, sea of red ink. It it okay. The Dirty Work came out and made four million the first week, and I think the Spade movie made two point seven or something. It was a point Total, seven man. that hurt. Oh. Yeah, for the first weekend, and then we were out. What's that? Do you know the cost of that movie? Uh, fifteen million. Okay, so yeah. loss. So the guy Spade wrote it with is working at a gift shop, uh, <laughs> selling Hummels, <laughs> and that's it. You're in movie jail. You'll never work again. Spade was on Just Shoot Me at the time, number one sitcom. He had that to fall back on, but. Yeah, you know. Well, when you read the script, did you read it before you did it, or you just no? I have yeah. yet to read a, a full script of anything I've done. Oh, that's amazing, including cool. barely which I wrote. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd be curious to see did anything pop on that script when you read it to get uh, people, that people. Well, the fact that it was out. Spade, you know, you read yeah. it in his voice. There's laughs in it because of him. You know, he's a very funny person, so he gets yeah. the. But he, uh, nothing else was in it. But yeah. that that's the way he is. He's got that attitude towards show business. He grew up in a trailer, and he's, he feels so lucky, which we do, too. We talk about it all the time. Yeah. He's like, you know, every, he does every sitcom. He was on a sitcom for 11 years. I never heard of it. This last thing he was on, we'll call yeah, it Simple Rules or whatever. Uh, good earner. John Ritter died. He walked right over the body. Yeah. Right over the yeah. body. <laughs> Yep. John Ritter was not cold yet. Right. Spade goes, yeah, that's terrible. Uh, let's make this for his company. Uh, he got that that uh, that part. By the way, eight simple rules for dating my teenage daughter. My uncle uh, Sonny originally wrote the the pilot, which was one simple rule for dating my daughter. Oh, my we can all guess that. Uh, and uh, think Jasmine guy. Uh, so uh, y- y- yeah, all that work. All that work yeah, he's, and just done. A, a critic says buy. Uh, a Broadway play is even worse because yeah. it's all the critics. They right. <laughs> Whatever they say in a movie, like Sandler didn't care what critics said for years and made a billion dollars. Yeah. But Spade didn't have the box office or the critique, which is a bad combination. Right. right. The, the only thing left is if your mom likes it. <laughs> uh, but he doesn't care. Was that his last? That wasn't his last movie, was it? Uh no, no, no. He made Joe Dirt after that. You know what? Sandler, Sandler saved all those guys from movie jail. A yeah. lot of funny guys yeah. who should be making movies that would have been out, like Norm after Dirty Work or something. Sandler's produced their films, and he had the juice. Yeah. Uh, he said that Columbia just you know produced his next movie. So he did Joe Dirt. He did uh, that Dickie Roberts movie. Uh, oh, right, right. The one that we all went away and got together, Chris Rock and him. And I beat <laughs> That's the, Grown Ups. Grown Ups, okay. That made a ton of money. Wow. A ton of money. Wow. Uh, that movie's fun. Chris Rock plays like a cable installer guy. He's got like a mechanic shirt. <laughs> does not look. He does not look comfortable in that. Uh, so uh, yeah, and a Broadway play is worse. And then I was thinking of this living room uh, just dismissed by Russ Benide. Yeah, I just I architectural would, I would, critic for the yeah, Audio Lang Show. I, this room should be bulldozed. <laughs> No, but I would. Everything would be torn down. Concierge, we have a uh, suggestion. <laughs> Look at this carpet, dude. I don't. Well, yeah. You know how many cum stains of. You know how many times uh, Stephen just... Dorff has fucked a chick here? On a, reshoots of City of Industry. <laughs> yeah, these chairs are trying to be a little too Miami, circa. Catch me if you can. You know, uh, it's disgusting. But Spade has that perfect attitude. He's like, I'm out of a trailer. Like, all, he does all these bad sitcoms. He's funny on them. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the alternative comedy, uh, people think he's uh, selling out. And Spade's reaction is always like, look, I'm in this for pussy and money. I don't care if the guy at Largo <laughs> <laughs> doesn't like that I'm working with Jimmy Garner. But, you know, people know Spade's funny. They uh, know he's right. funny. He's one of the funnier guys. I've always said that uh, he, if I could have saved his answering machine messages, uh, I could have put out an album of yeah. him cutting me down. Yeah. <laughs> or the first time I texted him, LOL. <laughs> first of all, I'll tell you when something's funny. <laughs> <It's> snooty, <laughs> arrogant. 
Yeah. I'm not a cheerleader. You're yeah. talking to it. Uh... Snooty, half gay. <laughs> right. Condescending. Very, yeah. very condescending. <clears throat> very, you shouldn't be with me. Yeah. And it, it, it's a show. He goes by showbiz rules. After we did that movie, we were best of friends for a couple of years. Then that was it. I think we he was done with me. Oh. I couldn't get him on the phone anymore. <laughs> uh, I said, and I was with him around the time his 300 pound assistant. I was just him. thinking that. Did you remember that? He uh, broke and tried to kill him, didn't he? 350. Now, he was his assistant the entire time he did that movie, so I knew him well. Skippy. 350 pounds. <laughs> wow. Picture this guy. He's 350 pounds. He can't get laid. He's trying to hit on every extra. He's watching Spade fuck everything that walks. And I think he went crazy. I think the Lord Michaels thing that when he told Norm about Marv Albert biting the whore's back. Uh, <laughs> Did I ever tell you that, Russ? Well, I know about the story. About well, 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 yeah. Norm, <laughs> Lord Michaels is just that really uh, trying to be the most cosmopolitan person on earth and very realistic with tragic, awful things. He says to Norm says to him, what do you think happened with that? They were talking about Marv Albert. Why did he do that? He goes, Norm, uh, the pussy that basketball players get is insane. I just think he went crazy. <laughs> <laughs> what an evil like j just getting right to the point <laughs> that's so funny he's a dorky little Jewish guy who sees Charles Barkley back in a blonde every other week <laughs> and he bit a whore <laughs> you know what's gonna happen is he's gonna bite a whore I've, I've seen it a million times that guy came back from that it's amazing <laughs> yeah he's that good listening to him do a hockey game is like a ballet he's just so perfect unbelievable and the condescension this reminds me of russ's stand-up but i was trying to de describe russ's stand-up money at the end of his set when he just has complete contempt for, <laughs> it's so versus the star oh it's, it's so bad. fucking funny it's so funny it's just like you know he's, he's discussing life life with the guy in the front row who <laughs> this is big night out and who has a referee jersey on from working at the uh, Sports Authority. <laughs> Modell's Triple X. Right. <laughs> He's got the blue vest from Home Depot. And, and, and literally, Ross is like, this your girl. What are you doing? Taking her, you're taking her somewhere special. <laughs> he gets to such a such contempt for humanity. He gets to a whisper where you can't even hear him. He's like, what are you doing? It's so, and I'm, I'm like belly laughing. <laughs> Tim, Tim getting the joke goes, I don't get it. He's just standing there. Uh, Timmy. Tim, really, please. The joke's going over your head. <laughs> <laughs> I got that one. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, Marv Albert. Marv Albert. Yeah. Okay, thank you, buddy. You got it. That was brilliant. And just that he's arrested. You know, they, they take your toupee when you get a mugshot, <laughs> which is fucking horrible. <laughs> I know, that's right. <laughs> is that I necessary? God, I never had that. Is that, did he really have to... They want to know. humiliate you. They took my pants off, and I just had it with his neck up. <laughs> uh, so... Uh, <laughs> I told Timmy in his mugshot, you can see his feet. <laughs> <laughs> Just the angle of the lens. That's hilarious. So, uh, so Marv Albert, when a shitty Nick <laughs> would funny. score a point, Marv Albert did the most subtle, brilliant thing, which is why it reminds me of you. He, he, he would get a little surprise in his voice, like that the shitty Nick scored a point. <laughs> yeah. A little like, oh. he would go like, uh, Ewing passes out to Vandaway, Vandaway is, oh, and Lee Wilkins gets on the scoreboard. <laughs> <laughs> Like, wow, uh, this awful player scored a point. <laughs> oh, Eddie Wilkins gets on the scoreboard. And that's $2,200 on a lightning bet down. <laughs> I lightning bet 500 a point. I lightning bet the over in the lowest scoring basketball game of all time. Do your fans know what that? That's the most amazing bet. Yeah. Yeah, they know. What genius in the scumbag world invented that? That is that. a scumbag world genius. Absolutely. Beautiful. It's literally like... Uh, Heroin, to, well, heroin yeah. is heroin, but uh, <laughs> but you're shaking, you're shaking again. The, you know the lightning bet there, yeah. right? You know every point. Again, over the best way to describe it is: say you lightning bet the over, a thousand dollars, which is what Norm would do. You get the over going into overtime. Okay, it's the number. It's one seventy, and you're at that number into overtime. That means every fucking basket is two points. It's two G's in your pocket. Can't come out of your pocket. Two grand in your pocket every fucking point. Doesn't matter who scores, what team. It doesn't matter if abroad from the third row in the yeah. Three pointers, three thousand. Imagine the yeah. jumping and I find the excitement in the uh, room. Um, yeah, no, I saw As it. Baskets are going in. Hotel uh, rooms like this were get destroyed. Unbelievable. And Norm did an awful thing. And that, how long is that going for? How many minutes? Uh well, um, w w when Norm won that day. Uh, he, oh God! He uh, about eight solid minutes of scoring. Wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And wow. Free throws, you know, uh, one for two is a grand. It's just, it's. And it's you're a, home free. It's, it's a, yeah. It's yeah. a kind of win you rarely get yeah. when you're Norman Hardy. Right. Uh, and he didn't <laughs> tell me till the end that he had the over, that he had the under, because I. Uh, I had I had the losing bet. He had the winning bet, and he mm. pretended we both had the. <laughs> At the end, he goes, "Nah, man, I won." I go, "You motherfucker!" And then he lost actually, because of course the bookie disappeared. Uh, right, Fran? Fran, yes. can you hear me? <laughs> Fran, you listening? Does he listen, Fran? Here's the thing, Fran doesn't listen. Here's the thing, here's the thing, here's the thing. Fran doesn't listen. Fran doesn't listen. Art is in trouble. Art is in trouble. Art is in trouble. Because I don't trust Dan. Don't trust Dan. Don't trust God. I don't know what's going on. The comedy's getting kind of lame. I don't know. Same jokes, same jokes. On Twitter, they don't like him. They don't like him on Twitter. I don't know. <laughs> He's doing friendly. I don't know. I don't know. I kind of like him. I don't know if I like him anymore. He's kind of got an attitude. Got an attitude. Got an nice attitude. Guys. I don't think his comedy's working anymore. It's kind of stale. Kind of stale. They don't like that blue collar thing anymore. Anyway, anyway. <laughs> he'll be homeless. He'll be homeless. He'll be homeless. <laughs> <laughs> That's him talking to my mother. <laughs> <laughs> what a fucking. What a just a ball of Irish. <laughs> I have to meet this guy. Yeah, well, he's a big guy. <laughs> yeah. He's a big guy, and uh, he's a big Irishman, big burly guy. And he was a pretty good pitcher, but then, you know, he, I'll put it this way, I doubled off him twice. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing about Artie hitting, good hand-eye coordination, nothing else, real slow, real slow. It doesn't offer anything. He'll never get scholarship money. Uh, it's waste time, waste time, waste time. <laughs> Here's the thing. He's got office detention every other week. He's missing practice, missing practice, missing practice. He's going to practice in corduroy pants, corduroy pants. <laughs> <laughs> he's, uh, he's he's driving by in the hood of a car with McGrath doing 110 miles an hour before an American game. Uh, he's pushing off the coach, pushing off the coach. Huh. He'll never go to college. He'll go to college. He didn't play in college, right? Yeah, he did. Oh, he did. Played at Montclair State. I think he has again a marketing degree from Montclair State, which again, oh. which again, I've I've told people how important that is in life. If to me. If two people walk into a, a, a job interview, uh, both about 32, and one guy has a marketing degree from Montclair State, and the other guy has the back of a Twinkies, like, you know, the back of a the cardboard <laughs> thing that Twinkies are on, and some of the Twinkie is still on it when you pull it away, uh, that the Twinkies rest on. If one guy has that, and the other guy has a marketing degree from Montclair State, they are starting out even. <laughs> the guy goes, okay, education, we're even, let's go on a man. <laughs> it means nothing. Just take the money and burn it. So funny. Uh, here's the thing. I'm doing it for baseball, for ball, ball. <laughs> I started on Nautilus, started on Nautilus, ground floor, ground floor, ground floor. Here's the thing. He playing any other sport? Just, just baseball? Uh, yeah, just baseball. Right. They want me for football. I can't do it, can't do it, can't do it. Rotator, rotator, rotator. <laughs> and right out of high school, you were at the, at the Long Shore. <laughs> no, no. I I, uh, I was I went when I was 21 to Long Shore, so I had uh, three blistering years. I worked construction. And then I worked at, when my old man died, my buddy Goof, this kid, Mike Tesca, he, uh, his father had a machine shop. And I was doing nothing, and uh, I had gambling debts. I owned, I owned a Shylock. I was feeding two Shylocks, as they say in the business. And he gave me a job basically sweeping up the floor in his machine shop. Wow. Six bucks an hour under the table, and I was betting. And that was when the Giants won uh, against the, 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 the Bills. And uh, I won money on that, thank God. That was literally a swing, whether or not I was going <laughs> to wow, <laughs> like go to jail or something. And then after that, at 21, I became a low showman. And that changed my life because 19 an hour. And if the old guys didn't want to work overtime, you could be there for four straight days playing cards and you're making 40 bucks an hour. Wow. Uh, and I made like 70 grand one year there with a container check. and Oh, God. Characters, but... With the, what other? Did you have any other job, Russ, that you thought you could have done for a long time? No. Well, you were you worked in finance, right? Yeah, I was the PwC. For and you said years. you got action from that, right? A little like like as far as excitement. No, you said, no. I thought it was ga like you said I, you got gambling. So no, no, not with that job, not at all. That you was never, a miserable job. Oh, you horrible. were telling me that people can get it from like day trading or whatever. Well, that's that's stock trading. This is mainly uh, this is auditing, so it's Ooh. like. Uh, it's like busy work. Almost. Well, it's it's reporting on their financial statements to see if they're accurate, you know, for the public, for, oh for investors. Oh, my God. That yeah. sounds horrible. horrible. Like testing accounts and testing. Wow. Yeah. Oh. Assets and liabilities. And it's. it's Why did you take reporting that Reporting is correct. You, you just know, I just didn't know what to do, right. Right, to be honest, you know. Well, and where'd you go to college? Uh, it's funny you say that. I went to Montclair. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm fucking sitting here like a lizard on a rock, just not saying anything. Well, like, you know, you did, uh, you did the proper thing. Well, you, you became a comedian. 
<laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Well, my father was no, a real honestly, you had the guy. balls to do that. Well, let me ex- let me explain this. We could easily make a Trenton State. <laughs> I, no, I mean, I want, I wanted to go to NYU. He just uh, refused to send me. And, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. I went to Montclair. And, you put yourself, uh, I mean, it was uh, money issues, right? I mean, it's, it's yeah, a lot more expensive yeah, yeah. than NYU. Yeah, and I took care of my mother. It was close to home. It was right. a whole big issue with that. But, Russ is just the same, man. Oh, thanks, bro. I mean, he really is. What he does, he does. He th- you know, what he does the right things, taking care of his own man. Yeah. Like, where I come from, that goes a long way. Yeah. I, uh, you know, I tried to, but I, you know, I was drunk. <laughs> uh, but the only thing at that school that you had a chance with was the accounting program there because all the big six firms, right. the big six in the world, went there. And I had offers from five of them my, Who ju- are my junior year. Who were the big six? At the time, it was Price Waterhouse, uh, Arthur Anderson, Ernst & Young. Ernst & Young, KPMG. Right. Uh, and you, uh, five Library. of them wanted you? Five my junior year I had offers from. Wow. Why did I get three eight or something? Hey, buddy. How you doing? Want to be on the radio show? Very <laughs> 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 exciting. Uh, Jerry, is it Jerry? Jerry just Hello. brought in our uh, food. We're commenting on the great. Uh, I don't know. Is it? Is this that? Is that? What is that looking? Is that north? What direction is that? We're looking at straight ahead. Is that north? Like what's out there? It looks like it just ends right. There's, that's not towards the Detroit's that way. The downtown Detroit is more that way, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, Jerry, it looks like it just fun. ends. This guy, let's get out of here. See you, buddy. Look at that area right there. Like what? What's that? Just, yeah, I mean, what, what, what's going on? <laughs> I mean, has everybody just become a dick? Like, was there a meeting where everyone in the world became an asshole? And I missed it. <laughs> was I late that day? You mean this guy that just came in? Yeah, like, <laughs> the attitudes. Well, he's... Uh, uh, Russ and I were at the airport last night, and this little petite broad, oh. uh, you know, she may or may not have been a different color than us. <laughs> and uh, she just had an attitude of like About five we, feet tall. We asked her a very important question, not no. like a like an innocuous like, is there a gift shop? You know, yeah. We wanted to know Premier Access was where where to go for that because it means saving four hours. Right. And she goes, it's closed. Yeah. Like like I should have got a newsletter. <laughs> like I woke up with a tattoo to my fucking face. I said, okay. <laughs> and then Russ, you know. I hadn't heard it. I didn't hear it. Right. Her. He went up and, yeah, right. And exactly. Said, Another human being asked the question. That well, happens yeah. in your job. And she you, just, yeah. So she just had like hours of like uh, premiere type people, I guess. <laughs> just fucking, you know, being condescending to her. And she just snapped. And I, 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 <laughs> I'm I like, almost, what? <laughs> it's close. Like, she, first, it was a long pause staring me in the face. I know. <laughs> you know, just engaging me. Oh, God. Could you imagine? I go, miss, I just fucking didn't hear what you said. Right. Uh, oh. Is it my fault? Is it my fault you can't find your fucking husband? <laughs> Is it my fault your kid has some sort of problem with his foot? Yeah. Just the unjustified rudeness usually. I know. My button. Is it my fault your kid is chubby for no real reason <laughs> and does a 8240? But TSA people are, I've noticed, I ready to fly off the handle. I mean, they've just had it. They hate it. Right. That guy today, when I was coming in through the thing, oh. he was so mad. I didn't take everything out of my pockets. So I, I saw money that. Money. Yeah. Oh, was he pissed? I he saw a confrontation. So yeah. Right. He gave me shit too. He goes, pull up your pants, sir. Come on, you can do it. That's yeah. what he said. Yeah. Like I'm a retard. Right. Jeez. Yeah, we need people there to Yeah. He to stop we, them from cracking and doing well, Yeah, like I'm stupid. No. Pull your pants up. Come on, you can do it. Yeah. You know why I can't get my pants up? Because in my pocket I have your yearly salary. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's like, how do you get this job? You can fog a mirror is your resume? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes not even. <laughs> right. You can fog a mirror. Jesus Christ. It is. It's, wait, excuse me. The TSA guy's giving me shit? <laughs> <laughs> and physically, where you find these people. You see that woman? In, that, that, that was okay. Her? Right, exactly. She was well, about nine feet tall. Okay, the other one. We forgot about the other guy. <laughs> this other guy, a Brooklyn accent, screaming. A TSA yeah. guy. I had a dream last night. I was going to meet Audie Lang. <laughs> I had a dream. Am I bullshit? I ain't bullshit. Yeah. yeah. Did I tell you? I had a dream. 3 a.m. I woke up. I'm going to meet Audie Lang. <laughs> I, am I bullshit? Yeah. First of all, who was he asking that to? Yeah. There, there was an, an, uh, an imaginary person. I, I, did I not say it? I said it. Okay. All well, of his employees looking at him like he's the guy on the top of the Texas uh, booth. <laughs> Six foot four, African American lady. Yeah, her fly open, chubby. <laughs> she could box out Kevin fucking McHale. She looked like Alex Cartwright. She looked Bill Cartwright. In his third year, the, the proportions made no sense. <laughs> I mean, her shoulders were ginormous. It looked like like uh, like some uh, ghetto kids were building a snowman and uh, gave <laughs> yeah. up. <laughs> yeah, just like and part of the rib cage was ex- was distended right. and I couldn't. <laughs> 
Uh, something went wrong, but yeah. she was huge. It looked like kids who grew up in Puerto Rico, and at 14, they were yeah. taken to Aspen. <laughs> and gave up around, like, mid, right here. Uh, yeah, she was... She was asshole the snow woman. <laughs> But that's oh, that's rough. If you put a hat on her, she would have said, "Go fuck yourself." <laughs> <laughs> hey, where's the nearest greenhouse, babe? Because I'd like to melt you right now. Yeah. So she's looking at this guy screaming out my name. Yeah. Like puzzled. Like okay, he's gonna he he could have cracked. Yeah. That's got to be against policy. <laughs> and meanwhile, Russ is doing something wrong, and I can't yeah. get my pants up. I said it. Did I not say it? <laughs> and then someone must have given him shit. Because as that guy's fucking with you, yeah. I look over. I forgot to be nice to the guy. I go, hey, man, thanks. <laughs> I guess the, someone like keep put, it cool. This, yeah. You get, you're out of hand. Already. Someone put the kibosh on it. At the right of fireman's fucking bullhorn. <laughs> yeah, I guess Bob Lanier, right. that chick, came over. <laughs> fucking already <laughs> lying. <laughs> hey. Yeah. Yes. And we were talking about like, Easy. what if he like, he was in Boston on 9/11? I knew. I said I was going to meet Muhammad Atta. I knew it. Did I not say it? I'm meeting Muhammad Atta today. Did I not fucking say it? How long you been here? The FBI guys always ask me that. How long you been here? I say I know Muhammad Atta. <laughs> you got a strip club, Atta's Tatas. <laughs> yeah, that's where they were last night. They were really fucking religious. The, the 9/11. Uh, oh, I know. Yeah, they were at a fucking I'm strip club. they went through with it after that. Yeah, really. Don't they yeah. see that and go, what the fuck am I doing? Yeah, you're home free. Just stay here. They must really be brainwashed. They must really think 70 virgins. Yeah. I hope they're all dudes. Uh, right. <laughs> Here's your virgin, Richard Simmons. <laughs> I want, how bad would you want to see the video, if all of life is videotaped, the tape of Richard Simmons made forcing him into the basement? <laughs> what are you doing, Marie? What is, we've been friends for so long, what happened? And what, no one's investigating that. All I hear is stories about that. <laughs> Everybody just lets it slide. Well, it you know. might be the single most fascinating thing I've ever heard. Uh, he was overcome physically by his cleaning woman, who I guess, what, does he always wear those shorts up that high? <laughs> She's giving him a wedgie. <laughs> uh, he's Doesn't work on me, it's ineffective. It's got to be a grim scene in that house. House oh, of Horrors. Oh, what does it look like? Yeah, he's, you know he's going to be fat again. <laughs> His hair is like pulled cut. Yeah, he was chubby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he looks like uh, Homo the Clown. Yeah. Oh. With those fucking <laughs> knee-high socks and the, the, the ridiculous over-tan body. Yeah, and screaming and tantrums. And yeah. Oh, he's disgusting. Yeah. And, uh, like, it's over. Like, you know, uh, leftover meal cards I couldn't sell. <laughs> he ordered too much the last yeah. order. <laughs> I told you I don't want the meal cards anymore. It's not selling. The, the chicken section, I don't need it. <laughs> what was? Well, first of all, does anybody? Can anybody explain to me what that system was? You get a card, and what you don't eat, you eat a salad. What the fuck was that oh, system? That was, yeah, it was a box yeah, of cards, yeah. Right? yeah. Like it's complicated. Well, you, you get five, I think you hand in a card with each thing, like a <laughs> carb card. And a, <laughs> a carb card. Know, right. Like losing weight is complicated. Right. Here's the thing: walk a little more and don't eat a UPS truck. For yeah. fucking, but these gimmicks sell. They make them a lot of money. You know? A ton of money. No. And none of them work. You're going to walk around with those cards your whole fucking life? No. <laughs> Playing food pinochle? <laughs> pinochle. <laughs> it's just like it. Those were not Channel 9 Howard shows. He, he would bring in the obese people, and Howard would have a full chicken on a fishing rod. Oh, my God. Over their Howard's face. There. Over their face like this. <laughs> that is. Howard, you're being ridiculous. He really was guiltless for years. Yes. You know? Well, you know what you got to hear? And and he Howard doesn't talk about it. That's how he deals with it. Dana Plato killed herself like eight hours after leaving the Stern. Really? Yeah, alone in the car, and she left the Stern show crying. I wasn't on. I wasn't on the show yet. Was he good? It was about a year. Oh God, yeah, because she was supposed to be sober. She was trying to get a job on a show. She was clearly slurring her words. And Howard did the thing that he does. He he lets the caller be the bad guy. Right. And he goes, you seem good to me, but I don't know. Tony in Queens. Yeah. Tony, what you, she's out of her mind. Fucked up, Howard. She's a loser. Uh. That show sucked. She, she's not, it got nothing to do with being drunk. She's a shitty actress. That's why. And, and Howard's like, they, oh, come on. Yeah. Oh, come on. You don't mean that. Right, right, right. That oh, come fucking... on. Stop it. And Fred's playing like bad acting in the back. <laughs> the, 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 the fucking theme song of the show she was on. And then her slurring her words. <laughs> Yeah. So she started to cry. She goes, no, I'm sober. I'm trying to get this job. And he was relentless. Ugh. And she killed herself. And Todd Bridges in the documentary about her, her each while, I got to give him props. Only guy with the balls to bring up that Howard should really and sort of say, hey, I'm sorry. Like, uh, you know. 
Did he ever yeah, talk? Yeah. Well, he, probably he just says, like, I don't know what you're talking about. You yeah. know, it's He's like, like uh, who's the head of the WWE? Uh, I take no responsibility. Vince McMahon, for, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Premature deaths. Of, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, that's the greatest smacking Je- army katans whatever the fuck his name is <laughs> Jesse, the, Jesse the body of Ventura yeah. uh, we always go shut up McMahon you don't know anything about Bob. Yeah, what do you know about wrestling get in the ring with us come on McMahon. and he's fucking ready to blow out of that suit he's I so know I, I absolutely take no uh, responsibility <laughs> for any that's of any wrestling steroids oh god Ste- his ass he took a shot in the ring of some something no someone had to kiss his ass because he lost and he's got that steroid ass he brought it was like grotesque and a, a fucking suit that like Capone used to wear was, uh, you know. <laughs> those muscle guys their suits are so funny it's yeah hilarious. and you can't say anything to him yeah. I can't tell Superfly Schnook he looks ridiculous <laughs> those giant suits there. right <laughs> You gotta go. You look great, so, uh, <laughs> King Kong Bundy. They, they have these bodies that are like uh, carved out of. St- they look terrible in suits. They terrible. just look ridiculous. How about your basketball players in suits like Shaq with those things all the way down here? <laughs> yeah, that looks good. It's funny. I gotta tell you, everyone who knows you thinks that's ugly. No. Uh, Shaq in the beginning, Aka rap, Aka act. Everyone is jealous of me. I could play basketball, Aka rap. Aka act <laughs> after Shazam the genie movie came out. Every other thing is Shazam. <laughs> Jesus. The worst was were we talking about Arnold Schwarzenegger and that Batman movie where every every yeah, like that <laughs> every right. close up he's Mister Freeze. He worked for eight days. He got twenty million dollars. Every he just goes for like two hours a day. A close up of him. You better chill out. <laughs> a cold joke. Everything's right? a cold joke. <laughs> Uh, I guess your account's frozen. <laughs> uh, hey, your wife seems cold. Uh, uh, Arnold, can we try one with frigid? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what am I a slave? <laughs> Every long shot is a body double. Every long shot is not, is not Arnold. Oh, he, just, he, <laughs> he just green screens it from his fucking. Well, yeah, they get contempt for staying there that long. Yeah. So you don't do. Like in Jerry Maguire, Tom Cruise didn't even think about staying. <laughs> when I was off, <laughs> it was literally an assistant director kid going, uh, yeah, so are you going to come to the volleyball game? <laughs> I got to pretend it's Tom Cruise. <laughs> <laughs> funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you see him on the set at all? He, I, Russ, I worked two days, 14-hour days. I was this close to him and Kelly Preston. Wow. They, it was as if I was a, 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 a mannequin. They didn't acknowledge my existence mm. until we did the lines. And Cameron Crowe was the nicest guy. He knew it was, but he couldn't say anything to him. They're talking about going to a party, and she was bringing that kid to the set that ended up dying. Like, he had a problem. You know, remember the Travolta kid who died Yeah, of course I do. Anyway, he seemed a little out of it, and he was with this this nanny, the 60-year-old woman who was watching him the whole time, and he seemed bored. And I was playing catch with one of the crew guys in between, like, shots, and he looked like he wanted to, like, touch the baseball. I rolled it to him. She went ballistic. <laughs> You're going to hit him in the face. What are you doing, you stupid asshole? Yeah, yeah. Screaming at him. He starts crying. I'm like, holy shit. And I said, are you raising a little fag? What are you doing? Come on. And of course, <laughs> Jesus. Kid's got the worst type of MS ever. <laughs> He's got something wrong. I, he, he died at 16. Oh. And, uh, autism or something. Yeah, which is complicated. You know, autism gets uh, worse when you catch your father blowing a guy. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> when 42,000 people come forward. <laughs> oh, my, I know. It's fucking. <laughs> yeah, he, and he has a deal, too, where Travolta can only stay till 5 o'clock. And uh, then a professional actor that they hire will do the lines off screen for you. Mm. Uh, and again, the pros, Jack Warden, I would have two lines. Jack fucking Warden stayed the entire time over here by the camera, like on an angle to make sure I was looking at him mm-hmm. doing the lines yeah. <laughs> for dirty work. Wow. <laughs> I mean, that's a, that was nice. Tom Cruise, no. He had a snowboard. He, he had to play a practical joke on Emilio Estevez. <laughs> He Are you go allowed and, in, what, during his scenes? Can you stay and watch him? Well, I, I, again, I'm in his scene. The right. entire I got cut out completely. Right. But uh, the scene is, uh, you, you familiar with the movie or like uh, with uh, Jerry Maguire? Yeah. Okay. The scene where Kelly Preston punches him in the face at the NFL draft. Okay. I'm in that scene. Okay. Uh, they're arguing. I come up and I play an annoying guy on the radio. <laughs> this is pre Howard. I was on Mad TV. I went to audition. The woman saw me on Mad. I got it. It was exciting. And then I got cut out. 
But uh, two 14-hour days, Russ. Two 14-hour days, I'm with them. Yeah. They're doing their lines. I have to stay there so he has an eye line. Mm -hmm. I come up and I go something like, hey, you two guys go to the Cuervo Gold uh, Volleyball Tournament. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to host it. You guys go. And he goes, Tom Cruise says, fuck off to me. Fuck off. And mm -hmm. I walk away, which got a laugh every time. Right. And it's Tom Cruise saying it. Uh, but I guess they didn't think it worked. So uh, I listened to them have a conversation for two for 14 hours each day. <laughs> they left. I had to do my scene. Cameron Crowe finally read it. And then I'm in uh, L.A. County Jail because I had cocaine on me and took a swing at a cop. I got an extra call because Quincy Jones called and gave me a 3 a.m. call. I checked my answering machine because I owed a bookie $30,000 in Staten Island. I wanted to say, give me a few days. And uh, first message. Audience Cameron Crowe, listen, I know uh, you're excited about the movie coming out. You, you didn't make the final cut. Uh, I'm sorry, man. It's not you. You were great. It's just that it didn't fit in the movie. Tom had some issues. We'll work together again, buddy. Bye. That was November 5th, 1996. He's yet to call. <laughs> Well, I'm in the orange suit. Yeah. I'm in an orange jumpsuit. My Listening to over. it on a payphone? Uh, <laughs> yeah, on a payphone. In L.A. County, I'm broke. A guard is like looking at me with a nightstick. There's four crips waiting to call their mother. So funny. Artie, Cameron Crow. Listen, second, uh, <laughs> second message. Artie, it's Bobo, the bookie. Listen, man, I could give you some time, but I need the 32K like yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 3,000 miles away. Uh Third call was my mother saying that my sister's going to come to California with my manager and she has a meatball sandwich for me. <laughs> I got out of that fucking thing after two months. Peter ate my meatball sandwich, my manager. It's the worst, it's the most mad I've ever been at a manager. <laughs> I, I ate that shitty prison food, like dried noodles and brown gravy and all this shit. And uh, I just, my mother's meatball sandwich. It was the last every, thing keeping you alive. You're right. You're right. I was like, I could do it. I can get to one more day. Some people have their family. Yeah. You think about that sandwich. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking about the fucking sandwich. I get out there and Stacy comes up to me tragic. I thought my mother died. She goes, Peter ate the sandwich. <laughs> 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 There's Peter with some gravy on his shirt going, I, uh, should I go? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. What a pathetic life. Patho please. That's ever, fucking amazing. Everything you're talking about is fucking unbelievable. <clears throat> Oh, those those guys. Nobody's gonna live this life. Unbelievable. <laughs> That's life. what I mean. Thank God. Oh, Jesus Christ. Please. Dan's, Dan's getting an unfortunate front row seat. <laughs> I'm starting to go with Russ. I hate this room. <laughs> it's awful. It's awful. <laughs> Russ is the kind of comic, and David Tell too, that will convince you of anything if you're around them long enough. It's like Playboy after dark. Yeah, it's seventies yeah, from sixty four. You know, you know. Lenny Bruce is gonna call somebody a cat. <laughs> uh, just very outdated. Yeah, but we got a view of nothing. Yeah. And Jerry, by the way, Jerry, you know, uh, the drug he's on, AZT. <laughs> oh, Jerry. Absolutely. Jerry. Jerry, yeah. the, Jerry the waiter. I don't know what that is, sir. <laughs> There's a, the additional gratuity lines right there. <laughs> uh, no, I said, what is that, North? He goes, uh, yeah. He, well, yeah. Well, he, he walked in, saw us three, he had his cruising face on immediately. <laughs> so let's move this into the other room. <laughs> Can I put this table up your ass? <laughs> <laughs> Along with something else? <laughs> what are you? What an asshole. Jesus Christ. He's probably a failed performer. Like, uh, yeah, you guys going to tell some dicky jokes? Yeah, well. <laughs> I just did Pippin. <laughs> okay? Uh, can I read you the reviews from uh, my Flint, Michigan Pippin? Well, just to describe the people at home, this guy physically... He couldn't. I, I thought the place was haunted when he walked in. <laughs> he, he looked like Michael Stipe if he had a B reaction yeah, I, and lost I, 30 pounds. I think you'd have nothing but empathy for the gentleman that came in here. And he's got to wheel his card in here and yeah, and wear that shitty uniform. Right. And he's that much of an asshole. Yeah. Where well, you hate him. <laughs> Eric the Midget on the Stern Show was a deformed midget with a club foot in a wheelchair who was given an early death prognosis from the doctors. I introduced, this is how much of an asshole he was. I introduced him to 3,000 people. They all booed. <laughs> they all said, fuck off. <laughs> you know how much of an asshole you have to be. They booed a midget with a deformed club yeah, foot. Was, I liked Hank, though. Hank was the best. Yeah. Hank never not drunk. Yeah. <laughs> Tremendous. He had the liver of a 92-year-old man. He was 38. <laughs> but if you're a midget, do you not? I mean, come on. Oh, the, if someone no. tells me not to drink, I'm like, fuck you. I don't think anyone would ever tell him not to drink. Right. Why don't you yeah. not reach the ketchup? <laughs> <laughs> that is, if anything's uh, proof of no God. It's... Oh, and he stunk. <laughs> Ugh, but most midgets stink because they can't reach everything. Oh. It's true. 
I don't know. Like, imagine you're you're a you're a parent and you start to realize your kid's going to be a midget. Like, when do you know that? I think you know right away. Do you really? Yeah. Do they look like a midget as a kid? Well, I think something's up right away. Really? I think there's a physical. Like I their head is big? I think the doctor would know immediately. And tell you. You'd have to tell you. I guess it's a lawsuit. What a terrible thing for a black family here. <laughs> your kid is short. <laughs> your kid is short and can't run. Ugh. This fucking world. Some world. No, it is. like, like uh, There's a god, right? I guess so. And there's midgets. Yeah. No. Yeah. Well, well, this... Please. Well, what do you think? Well, and, and, well there's Detroit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's endless what can go wrong. I mean, Down syndrome and... Well, look at the Mario Bosco, the kid on our show. Yeah. You know, uh, he said he claims that his mother, just before she gave birth, took a Sudafed for some reason. And he came out looking like, you know... Now, how is she not a billionaire? I don't know. That's the thing. Exactly. She didn't want to sue the. He claims she didn't want to sue the, the hospital for compassion. What really? You, what about the maker of Sudafed? <laughs> I know. What about the. Fa well, Mario claims you would look like John Stamos. Who was <laughs> what are the damages? I would have been on full house. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> no, you're right. That, that's why it's bullshit. See, Russ is. A, he, he's, we've been thinking about this for eight months. We never got that logical. He's yeah. right. What the fuck? That immediately been filed. He felt sorry for Sudafed? Yeah, I know, really. That would have been an easy settlement. Everybody would have said, fuck you, we're not going to court. Yeah, exactly. Like Tracy Morgan. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I still can't put a tuxedo on to go to the sign that lobby dude. <laughs> you know how fun, how much fun I would have had there <laughs> with my old castmates, Alec Baldwin, what Tina the, Faye. What was the speculation on the number on that? Summer? 100 million. 100 million. Oh. Artie Foucault supposedly got three, uh, th two three-piece suits. <laughs> no, Artie did well. I think he got very high. Yeah. Uh, well, again, I think the guy who did uh, the uh, proportionally, the guy who made out the best was the guy who had a red Escalade dealership uh, right next to Artie Hook. <laughs> <laughs> I think he has, he has Escalades that match the color of his suits. <laughs> That's logical. That's a good thing to spend your money on. Did you ever see Artie's daughter, Artie Fuqua's daughter? I did. She's beautiful. She's hot. Beautiful girl. And look, I, I'm so happy for that guy. Uh, he, he lost a son in one of the worst ways you can, uh, playing street basketball. And his the kid's best friend accidentally hit him with an elbow, and he had some sort of brain thing and died right there. The best friend had guilt on a level, you know. That's he, he's brutal. been at the bad end of freak odds. Uh, yeah. No well, what else happened? It was, a, it was a major tragedy in his life? You're talking those, about... The, those two are enough. I mean, his son's a teenager, gets oh. elbowed playing fucking... Pick Are you consider uh, the van uh, uh, a tragedy? <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. That's like fucking Abner Luima. Listen, <laughs> fucking, imagine walking in a nightclub with that suit, like, and the girl's like, "Hey, it's Abner Luima. Isn't that, is that the guy plumber?" And he's like all cocky. <laughs> he's got that gold chain. <laughs> Hey girls, what's up? Hey girls, uh, uh, do you mind if I sit? I can't sit down actually. <laughs> yeah, you guys, your girls mind standing? <laughs> Any of your girls mind watching me stand? Yeah, just just an air of cockiness because he yes. got his money from. Well, That's how about uh, Lorena Bobbitt's? Uh, uh, what's his face, Bobbitt? Well, he Wayne didn't get Bobbitt. Any money. Right, but I'm saying. Well, no, I thought he did. No, from who? She had no money. Uh, the cop who kept the dick a little too long. <laughs> No, that's just nothing. He was so stupid. Did you ever, did you ever have that guy on? He was as dumb as a rock. Yes. Yes. Oh, my God. As dumb as a fucking stone. He was on. Were you on Stern when he came on? Yeah. One time. Okay. Uh, he had a porno out. Oh, yeah. This thing worked, all right? Yes, yeah, suppose he said so, yeah. Sewed on. Oh, my God. Yep. I don't even like talking about that story. <laughs> it's terrible. Uh, oddly enough, I don't mind Abra <laughs> <laughs> But what? Artie Fuqua, okay. Didn't remember a thing. Doesn't remember a thing. Woke up in the hospital, feeling fine, morphined up. She was there a couple of weeks, got a lot of sympathy and 50 mil. I think that's a win. Yeah. Well, uh, the only, th if I had to take the other side just for fun or whatever, just to talk about well, it. Well, this is the point counterpoint section. Of the yeah, show. just for the, <laughs> for the hell of it. So <laughs> would you, it. <laughs> would, so usually to get that kind of money, there's, right. there's substantial damages. Absolutely. So would you uh, take his damages physically? What are the damages? I don't, we don't know. You got a little bit of a beer gut? <laughs> <laughs> we don't know what they are, but would you take them uh, and the money without knowing them? Uh, I think you can only fuck three white chicks a night now. <laughs> but, I, well, know, yeah, but well, that's know. the thing. So, okay, so then we have to predict the damages. Like, 
Well, you can't. You just yeah. gotta, well, what could they be? Okay, say you have to use a catheter twice a week. To yeah, pay. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I go, no, keep the 50 mil. <laughs> I've had one. Forget it. Forget it. Professional yeah. nurses can't make that not feel good. Yeah. I feel bad. Yeah. It's terrible. Yep. Yeah. And uh, it's like 2017. I can't find a better way than that. I guess not. Isn't that crazy? There's a hole there. We're using it. Uh, it's crazy. I would vote for Brexit. <laughs> Uh, well, that thing, Artie seems the same. He seems he like the same guy. He absolutely does. Right? That, that's, if I had to say something on the other side, that's what I would say. Uh, you know what? Uh, this is going to sound like he, I, I say he's funnier. <laughs> and I say Tracy's funnier. Yeah. I don't know. I could barely get in my Lamborghini. <laughs> <laughs> he was yeah, well, he's... He, he The day after he got that money. The, the, he had no cane. He was playing bocce ball on a pogo stick in the run. <laughs> Yo, my, my kids can eat. It's so funny. Again, another guy you root for, though. The yeah. day before he got on SNL, he was living a block from fucking Yankee Stadium. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Yankee Stadium's not that much fun in February. Yeah. But uh, God yeah. bless him. Yeah. But now they want the money back. That story went away quick. They can never do that oh, what? publicly. Supposedly, the insurance companies at the Walmart, what are you doing? You gave them the money way too quick. We're not paying this. We're going to investigate the whole thing. <laughs> Good luck. So, you know, you know, Trace, it was bullshit. Come on, he couldn't, oh, yeah, well. he couldn't go to Saturday Night Live. Give me a fucking break. Yeah. And he gets America's sweethearts to say it. Tina Fey and uh, the lawyers were like, hey, uncle, what yeah. the fuck do you want? Yeah. Get Baldwin off the fucking screen. The hunt for uh, Red October. <laughs> Well, good luck getting that money back. No, they're not going to know it. First of uh, all, it'll be gone in two weeks. First of all, you got everybody at the insurance company wearing a red suit. <laughs> <laughs> Every suit is red. <laughs> now he's got one blue suit, and he was eating a steak. He had three steaks at the new uh, cellar. And why are you eating three steaks? Because I can. <laughs> <laughs> he was blacking it up. Funny. Uh, what a weird, what, what a gang. Who, Russ, who would you say is the gang at the Comedy Cellar? Who is your, if you had to pick, like, the guys you consider your generation, how many would there be, and, like, who, who do you think they are? You mean me, you, Comedian. Attel? Yeah, like that type of thing. Yeah, I guess me, you, Attel, Kevin Keith Brennan Robinson, Kevin Brennan. Uh, 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 Keith, right? And uh, you start running out of names. Patrice fast, was? Right? Patrice is gone. Sure. Uh, right? Yeah, I'm saying, well, you can name the guys that are gone. Yeah, well, I guess then Robert Kelly's around. Right. Well, you had Robert Kelly die. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? He came, he started doing an impression of me, so he's trying to get work. <laughs> I know that that was, that someone told me Bobby Kelly was doing an impression on me, and I love Bob, but I was like, okay, that, that, trying to start a fight. I don't care. It sounds good. And then I heard him kind of giving me shit. And I said, uh, he's doing an impression of me. Did he get a job? <laughs> <laughs> he was a great looking guy. Like he looked like sort of like that Don Juan, you know. Uh, all right, I went too far with that. But uh, so Kelly, Rich Voss, Colin. Voss, yep. Uh, uh, Colin's a little ahead of us. Nick DiPaolo. No, Colin, yeah, he's got one foot in, one foot out. Certainly Nick, right? Yep. Uh, Natterman. Dan Natterman. Yeah. Who, you know what? Ted did you Alexandro. Watch? Started coming to me. Ted is a great comic. Right. Really great comic. I agree. What is uh? What is he up to? You don't see a lot of him at the cellar anymore. No, I don't. You know, I don't know. I don't really know what he's up to a lot. I DC mean, we, Benny, I guess, right? And then, DC uh, Benny. So much, so many funny guys, man. Yeah. Like real funny guys. That's what aggravates you the most when you see that Corden guy. You know, God bless. I don't know, look, the guy got a job. He probably broke his ass. Well, it's a bad analogy. Uh, <laughs> he probably got in. The, broke. He probably worked. Uh, he probably worked hard. Uh, uh, yeah. This is the late night guy on CBS, right? Corden, yeah. The guy who's winning Emmys for doing karaoke in a car. Yeah, you know, I just I, stuff my aunt Millie thought it's of. It's amazing. I, I just I don't know. I just don't like. Guys Literally like that. karaoke in a car. Yeah. No, I know. And it, it, they were calling him best writing. Because he went viral the most times. You know where he goes viral? He sings an Adele song with Adele. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh... You give me Adele for 10 minutes on this podcast, I'll go viral. Yeah. Yeah. We'll both go viral. She'll have a virus. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah it, it, it's a very frustrating business in that sense that yeah. there are so many funny people. <laughs> like, it's like an after, he's like doing a women's afternoon show in late night. You know, <laughs> right. right, exactly. Like that pandering. No edgy. No edge. No, no danger. None yeah. of the shit like you know that Letterman used to have when he was on twelve thirty. Like really, you go, hey, anything could happen right now. Yeah. 
Uh, which is why Norm was great. Uh, but that's was the point great. where the Tina Fey argument, uh, uh, and even the kid who does it now, the Harvard kid at Weekend Update. Yeah, they're technicians. They're be- they can do it all. Hit the joke. They're trained yeah. at it. But Norm was like, you know, the guy that takes risks. Greatest newsman. You know, yeah, yeah, and uh, of all time. And Chevy Chase too was a nut. Like anything could happen. And I think that's why people love Sandler too. There was, I want to hang out with this guy. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to hang out with the guy who. Learned how to tell a joke for 15 years, and then like boom, boom, boom. I want to. No, I was the best. <laughs> yeah. There was a guy who worked at the show, Danny Wilson. I don't know what happened to him, but we used to hang out with him. He was a real, real bad gambler. He was Dave Wilson, who the, the director of SNL. He was his kid. And his job was to take the pictures of the hosts that week. They only had separate. That was his job. And he had a life uniform, Danny. He, he had a, always had a, a, a a jean jacket that was faded, white pants. I don't even know what they were made of, and uh, and sneakers like Reeboks that always looked exactly like three months old, and sunglasses that were glass like mirror sunglasses, and his hair done like someone in a Journey video, mm-hmm. and that's what he looked like every day. Yeah, every day took pictures and would go to Atlantic City and play craps, grind it out eight hours a day, and he knew what he was doing. Would make about eight hundred bucks a week, and he would stay there in a motel. That was that was his life. Wow. So of course we hung out with him. Uh, and uh, he, uh, you know, he he was a guy who you think like, okay, uh, is he going to lose it? Is he going to snap? And how much do I have in common with him? Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, he's he's nowhere to be found right now. And I, 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 Norm loved him because he was a fuck up. The same reason Norm liked me. He said to me, "You're a loser." <laughs> You're a loser. <laughs> he said, that's why I gave you the job. I thought you're a loser that's good at one thing. Because <laughs> that's, that's kind of so interesting to me. And, okay, Danny was like that, too. But Norm loved him. Nobody else loved him. At the end of every weekend update, he played this thing called Hall Ball with Danny Wilson on the 17th floor while the show was going on. He would be in no more sketches after update. They'd go and they th- throw the ball as hard as they can at each other. 500 bucks a point. <laughs> and I went up there, too. I got addicted to it. We were lightning betting Hall Ball. If you hit the other guy, you get the yeah. play. Yeah, and yeah. he had to try to get it from... It couldn't go past the hole. Right. Like, the hole was like this size. Yeah. Okay. At the end of every weekend update for about a year until Lord Michaels made him stop, he would tell the last joke and go, Danny Wilson, 17th floor. <laughs> <laughs> Go so back and funny. watch him. Danny Wilson, 17th floor. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> and everyone Hilarious. else was scared of the kid. <laughs> <laughs> we thought he was dead in Atlantic City once uh, after the big Fran controversy because he owed $16,000 and didn't have the money. And somebody threatened him. I don't know, called him up. No, no one knew who called him up. Uh, and he went to Atlantic City. He fled and we found him. Me and Norm found him in a room. The most depressing sight I've ever seen in my life. The leaning tower of Domino's pizza boxes on the floor. <laughs> Light beer, and he was grinding it out, trying to win $16,000. Oh, Norm said, good news, the, the bookie disappeared. <laughs> uh, well, that's, you know, again, he seemed happy. He was a happy guy. Was he? I think he was. Uh, well, I don't know. I don't know about that. I don't know. I think uh, he was an embarrassment to the family. Uh, and Chevy Chase, when Dave Wilson left, a, a broad took over. For the uh, direct, directing <laughs> Chevy Chase, I went to an, uh, uh, a rehearsal once with Norm, and Chevy keeps yelling in the middle, "What are you doing? Who's that? Who's the broad? <laughs> Who's the fucking broad? Where's Davy?" I was working there uh, during that time. During that time when Norm was there, and Chevy was coming on as host, w- and he, they, everybody hated him. Yeah, I know. I know. Everybody hated Chevy. Yeah, Chase. Like he worked for two weeks on Dirty Work. I love the guy. Yeah. Like, what does that say about me, though? Yeah. He he, but I could see he treated people shitty. But he was yelling at this poor woman. Like, what are you doing? That's like a retarded thing to say. Why would you say that? Yeah, it's all I heard was comments and uh, how nobody liked them. <laughs> that's all I heard up there. Uh, yeah, he could be a dick. No. It was just me and him shooting pool till three in the morning. He was matching me shot for shot, and uh, he told me stories about Belushi. I walked him home to his fucking apartment, uh, Sutton Place. Where Chappelle was doing half baked. Chappelle comes in the. It's just me, Chevy Chase, and Chappelle at three in the morning. Chappelle's got a poodle. <laughs> Chevy Chase has no idea Chappelle is. He's going, Who the hell are you? <laughs> Screaming. What's with the dog? What are you, a fag? <laughs> hey, Artie, I think this guy's a fag. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> huh. uh, well. You have to see the once handsome Chevy Chase now. Right, you know, oh my god I, That's a transformation you It know. really is You unbe- rarely see that It looks like it's Pat With the makeup yeah. <laughs> And a bowler tie And just a, a Ginormous distended belly And completely well, white Is something wrong hair? with him Like he's got know. Does he have a 
a disease, right? That means you have like one of Ethiopians. Out. I don't know, but you know, he's in his seventies, so anything could happen. He was thirty-one when that show went on. I know, I, I remember. And he, he was, was handsome. Like, oh God, he was a you know? leading man. A lot of chicks. Fucking the shit out of Goldie Hawn like everyone else went 50 bucks on that day. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was out of line. <laughs> Let's take a break. I want to have some of this brownie. Right. <laughs> the name of the ice cream was yeah, okay. Robin. <laughs> it's coming from the, the guy who lives in the area where Friendly's is the big ice again, cream. Again, that's a horrible. You're not making nobody. Friendly's is just as bad. Yeah, Dan, the word cock <laughs> is in the title. Oh, we, we got the Dan uh, Flotta point. Yeah, I'm in the real quick. Go ahead. Well, can of we talk? You can start. You can uh, you're not that important. Not already. Yes, you're very important. Jump. I, I apologize. There's a great Simpsons episode. Yeah. I forget what the setup is. I think Homer's teaching or something, but it's at like a for old people, a class for, for really old guys. <laughs> yeah. One guy raises his hand. Is a bathroom nearby? And he goes right, right down the hall. Every chair goes, Kirk! and they all get up and walk out. <laughs> <laughs> Those are great jokes, man. Those like like the one joke. Um, uh, you might know this. It's a classic. Where uh, the bar is, is Mo the bartender. Mo's bartender. Yeah, he bets against the Harlem Globetrotters. <laughs> he bets the Washington Generals, and he, he's like, the, the Generals would do. <laughs> They lost 300 in a row. And he's watching the game. Ref, he's using a ladder. He's <laughs> using a ladder, right? He's spinning the ball right in front of you. Grab it. Oh, wow. Grab it. There's not water in the bucket. How many times? That is you... so funny. Oh, the generals were due. Made me fall off. Our... Me and my funny. buddies, when that first ran, for some reason we were watching it in a sports bar waiting for the late game, Sunday Night Football. Because, I mean, my God, they created a four-day weekend for us <laughs> with gambling. Get up early. Put in your 12 o'clock bets, put in your 4 o'clock bets, put in your 8 p.m. bet, then figure out Monday night game. And we were watching The Simpsons in between. And we were all in a good mood, I guess, for some reason. And, uh, yeah, that joke, when he said the generals would do in that voice, so oh, my funny. God, they lost 400 in a row. Uh, so funny. <laughs> Ref, he's using a ladder. Or uh, Homer's having an argument at the bar, Some like they're talking politics. <laughs> and uh, he goes, well, let me play the devil's advocate. And he turns around and starts playing a video game, this devil's advocate. <laughs> Tremendous. Yeah, stuff like that is, um, it, it, you know, and again, when you become a Simpsons writer, you suppose that you fall off the face of the earth. You're just always there. Always doing that. Because the, I, the cartoon shit, again, I was a voice on a cartoon for 13 uh, episodes, and I, I, I cried the day it ended. I would leave the Stern show. This is like 2003-ish. Okay, every Thursday, I'd leave Stern. I'd walk to 54th and Broadway. Nice walk, little exercise. It was eight blocks. And uh, I get there, dirty water dog, go inside when they had dirty water dogs. And Russ, at one, it would take me half an hour. I didn't read other dialogue. I just read line, line. I didn't know what the conversation Amazing. was. I read my line. Lucy Lou was on the other side of the conversation all the time. It was called Game Over. It was based on, not a bad premise, video game is over, and now what do those people in the video game do uh, in their real lives? That's it. Patrick Warburton, uh, who's the American dad, really funny guy, he was the dad. Lucy Liu was the mom. Never met her. I did 13 episodes. Never met the woman. Wow. She was in L.A. Yeah. And Rachel Dratch was the daughter. And I'm the dog, the family pet. <laughs> I think my name might have been ugly. That's so funny. I just would. It was uh, 10 grand a week. 10 grand wow. a week. And I would leave wow. after Stern. No one watched it. It was like the range was zero. I auditioned for that dog, by the way. You kidding me? Nope. Okay. Well, I looked like it. <laughs> I had a I, UPN. It was on when UPN was still around, and that was—I mean—the easiest money ever. I, I might have cried when it ended, and uh, you know th th that's how cartoons are. Like uh, Rock talked about Madagascar and stuff. You get a million dollars. Yeah. You're and going, they give you like a million dollars. Lucy Liu w was not. I never met the woman, no. and I had dialogue with her. Just going and, in pajamas. <laughs> right. yeah, oh, uh, that guy Warburton is funny. Um, but uh, again, The Simpsons is all Harvard guys. It's like a uh, and Sam every Simon. character is tremendous too. Every character across right, the board, right? Exactly. And uh, Harry Shearer, you know Dan's best friend, and uh, uh, I don't think Dan's ever met Bill Murray, but Harry, I know for sure, uh, <laughs> is the voice of four different. What is he? The voice, no, Mr. Burns. Like eighteen. Eighteen different. But what are the main ones? Burns. Burns. Oh, Burns is great. Smithers. Now, did Harry have those voices in his repertoire and came in, and, and did he look at the picture of it? Because that's what they made me do. Uh, Russ, when you audition for a cartoon, they were like, you look at the thing drawn already? Like, no, you, I didn't. I looked at the dog, and I, I again, they were giggling. Like, okay, I get it. I'm, I, I'm not groomed. I get it. Whatever. 
Uh, but you look at the picture first. A long the, time ago, this one, right? This is a long time 2003. ago. 2003. Okay. 2003. You imagine if that goes, like, you know, oh. and it's a hit. Just the, the Simpsons is going into 30 it, fucking years. That's the easiest money in, in the world. Probably. Well, for Harry Shearer's talented enough. All those guys. Julie Kavner, she doesn't do a character voice. It's her voice. She goes in and talks into a microphone. Oh. That's basically what she does. She doesn't write it. Talks into a mic. And what's it, 400 grand that episode again? <laughs> Holy shit. That is the easiest job in, in the world. Like quite literally No the easiest job In the world Julie Kavner's husband <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Kavner Are you Mr. Kavner Yes I am Why aren't you at the door I'm talking on my uh, My microphone What's I'm by the pool <laughs> I'm by the infinity pool <laughs> Mrs. Kavner is yelling At Mr. Burns Mr. Burns one time Is, is dying And he's on his deathbed And he goes I wish I spent more time At the office <laughs> <laughs> So That's perfect great stuff. That, yeah. that, well, Sam Simon, uh, the guy talking. Sam, we're talking about you. You down in hell? <laughs> How's it going down there, fuckface? You asshole. Um, are you wearing rouge right now? <laughs> Remember when you I'd see you early in the morning when we had the deal and you still had a rouge that you had like eyeliner on? <laughs> what was going on, buddy? What was going the fuck on? Uh, anyway, I. Uh, uh, you see my bookie down there? You see, <laughs> tell him to fuck off too. <laughs> Uh, he ran that room the first three years he was the head writer and you know everybody had talk- Conan O'Brien was on the st- my favorite episode maybe the monorail episode Springfield yeah, gets right. a monorail comes Conan song. wrote it you know he's got the writer's credit and Sam would always go well I mean we all wrote it I don't know <laughs> Uh, that voice. Yeah, Jesus. And uh, I, I socialized one night with Conan and Sam. Sam owned a piece of a boxer. Uh, and I would tell him when he, when he wanted to upset him and get him in trouble with his liberal friends. I'd go, you own a black guy, right? A part of a black guy? <laughs> Honey, you know, it's not legal to own a person. <laughs> <laughs> he was fast, though, uh, with jokes. And yeah. uh, Conan said he was vicious, a vicious human being. And, like, would, if you pitch something unfunny, the most unsafe, unfriendly room... You ever heard in your life just wow. like oh uh, just vicious and i saw that side of sam a couple of times when you when i introduced uh, like people to sam for the first time like my sister wanted to put a hit out on him <laughs> uh and he's just got that condescending he was in new york for 9 11 and he was shacked up with a playboy playmate that he was about to marry wow. a 23 year old blonde playmate at the saint regis 50 blocks away from the and sam goes like this goes, yeah you know i couldn't get an omelet Oh God! <laughs> Dead serious. He goes, yeah, well, giggling. He goes, yeah, you know, it was rough being in New York. I was at the St. Regis in the, the, one of the top suites with the plane. <laughs> I don't. Know, I kind of like him. Uh, yeah. Like well, this. no, no. Yeah, yeah, believe me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I do too. No, I like that. That's a part I like of him. Yeah. I saw him do rich guy stuff that was so funny. Yeah. I might have told you this. Look. He wanted to go. He just bought a brand new Mercedes. $150,000 Mercedes and he needed new mats for it like the custom mat so he goes to the Beverly Hills Mercedes right by the Flint building he wants to buy a mat from this guy the guy's giving him an attitude the salesman who's like you know did I tell you this yeah, yeah okay so he's funny. giving an attitude and he's like no I just want to ask you real quick goes, please sir please please three minutes of that Sam calls another salesman over make sure the salesman is directly next to the other salesman and says this guy won't help me I want to buy that car <laughs> He bought another $150,000 Mercedes to fuck with the guy. That's hilarious. To wow. make sure the guy didn't get a commission. See, that, that, wow. I'm hearing all good things about this guy. <laughs> Believe me, I'm cherry picking. <laughs> <laughs> No, he did, he did all that stuff. He was an asshole to other people. And, and uh, like most people, only thing he liked were animals because, you know, human beings. An animal, if you have bacon, you know, you're, it's your friend. Right. Right. I, uh, that's why I liked him too, Cozzelli. He always had bacon. <laughs> I'm the only other people like a dog. You, you give me bacon, I'm fine. Uh, and, and, and again, they have unconditional love for you, dogs, a la Dan. You know, you're always like, they always show love because you feed your dog, dude. And you feed Hitler if you fed the dog. Hitler had great dogs, German Shepherd. <laughs> because Hitler wasn't loved by anybody, even his generals, we found out. That Volkerai guy hated his guts. You think the German Shepherd tried to blow up Hitler? No, Hitler had food. <laughs> Gordon Gecko's like is one thing about wasps. They love animals. <laughs> that's right. Uh, they hate people. That's right. That's exactly right. And that's what that's what Sam was, uh, the Jewish version of that. <laughs> uh, it, it just cold about everything. Yeah. And um, but one flaw, one fatal flaw where I had over him, a obsessive Stern fan obsessive gay about it really weird about it. When I left the Norm show where I met him, he directed episodes of Norm. 
real condescending towards the writers too. And and again, that's another great thing. <laughs> <laughs> he hated the guys. <laughs> they would be trying to figure out a joke, and he would want me and Norm to come and uh, go play poker with him. And he goes, "What's the holdup? What's going on?" They're trying to figure out a joke. They're seeing him go, "Well, just make it this." He, he would pit, and he would pitch the greatest joke. It'd be great. <laughs> yeah, he did that like a couple of times. Yeah. Um, but he fucked with me in a way. At the end of my life, he did one thing that was like really fucked up, really fucked up to get on Howard's good side, or as he thought. And when I was basically. Uh, out of it I had just stabbed myself I was out of the hospital for a week I didn't know what was going on very unstable mentally he calls me up and says I, I don't think I ever told the story in detail he says uh, are you gonna work again ever I go I don't know right now I don't know he goes well I got a script I wrote a short film that maybe you could star and we'll try to raise money for it I'm like okay that's weird yeah. FedEx is me a script the entire script is making fun of me like everything I went through, mm. really vicious shit. Like about my sister, my girlfriend, my mother. Like, and I play this fat guy who's just a loser, and I, like, you know, wastes his life. And and I go, Sam, what the fuck is this? Like, you know, you realize I'm like, you know, really gone right now. Mm. And I go, what are you doing? It took a lot of effort, a lot of effort. He made it look like a script, like stuff was redacted. He had a character of me. It, it was. It was called like Mr. Ginormous or something, like a fat joke. And a character of me with uh, graphics that his friend did. And it was all meant to fuck with my head. And I don't know what was behind it. Was it even a real project? Either? No, no, not at all. He oh, never, it was never just... meant to make it, ever. Wow. I know that for a fact. Oh, well, that's uh, never meant to make it. Particularly insidious. So here's the thing. I don't know if Howard knew about it and he okayed it. Or there were references in the script that he would have had to talk to somebody who knew somebody else in my life, I can't even say say it right now, but someone close to Howard knew somebody else in my life. The only way they could have known stuff that was in that script is if they talked to this person. And it was a girl I dated for a while. And I I could not believe it. I was murderous. I, I, I said, Sam, you gotta tell me right now what the fuck is going on. And he's giggling. Someone else is on the line. And I said, Sam, listen, you better watch your fucking back. I, I was really, it's the first time I got out of bed, I wanted to go kill him. And uh, I showed it to other people in my life that that, that, that really agreed with me. They, they couldn't believe how insidious it was. When Sam was dying, I reached out to him. And I wanted to, you know, I was going to be in L.A. And I wanted, to go, but I wanted to go. I, <laughs> I, I tell you, man, it would have been like uh, he was bald, the chemo, whatever. And I ended up tweeting about it and uh, still wanted to see him nicely. And Sam goes, I don't know what Artie's talking about. I guess he's still a junkie or something like, something like that. So uh, I just let it go, and he died, you know. And I, 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 I part of me was upset and to go see him. But um, uh, what would you do in that situation? I would have written a script about his can, uh, Mr. Ball. <laughs> You're Mr. right, Mr. Emaciated. Well, I ended up sort of no. Remember, no, Dan. No, remember how nice I was yes. when he died? Yeah. Yes. I said, I go, my, you know, he was my friend for a while. He died, and. But now the gloves are off. But I will say that everybody's nice on their deathbed. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Well, he don't, but he was still an asshole. Oh. <laughs> no, but up to me, he was, there was something about me that he thought, I don't know. I, I have theories that I can't even say. I can't even say. I'll say them. Uh, <laughs> I really think, and, and guys. Is there I'm any gonna, way you could have thought you, were, you would have laughed at it? No. Okay. It was no. That vicious. I knew he was trying to like be awful. Uh, because he never let the cat out of the bag. He just giggled. And, and what's I, his motivation for that? To get him good with Howard. Oh, I think Howard had that much hatred for me. Uh, and people can't believe that, but... <laughs> no, a guy like him, you never know what fucking drives him. I, I'm still the only person who ever really challenged him in a way where he challenged other people. He would be vicious towards people with what they looked like and everything. I'm the only guy who ever... I mean, I called him a pelican. <laughs> Nobody ever did that to him <laughs> And I'm not wearing it like a badge of honor I'm just saying I think that, You know and, and look Where I come from My old man would have said Look this guy gave you a job And you know How dare you But he pushed me I was really down and out after Dana Two days after I say I'm broken up with Dana He brings in a chick Who has a fat fetish supposedly mm -hmm. And I said First of all dude You're not doing me any favors Why I'm trying to get you laid I'm like Howard I'm fucking chicks That would that, that I would step this, Step over this girl's dead body To fuck <laughs> On the road I'm, I'm fucking Arizona nines Yeah This broad is a, is You know I'm gonna fuck her I'm doing her a favor uh, How about I have an ugly Other girls I'm fucking on the road fetish That's the only way I would fuck her <laughs> Right And then also You're being duped She clearly has a boyfriend just wanted to get on the show that was proved right. right levy brought her in 
And uh, he goes, oh, come on, she likes fat guys. I go, okay, tomorrow I'm going to bring in a chick who has a pelican fetish. <laughs> I think that's an appropriate oh. yeah. rebuttal. Well, well, of course it is. Yeah. You know, but but uh, someone's out of line for saying that. So uh, I think he was seething towards me after that. And uh, and again, I, I'm not, I, there's no way not to sound like, I, I, no, people know me, I'm not an arrogant asshole. I'm very realistic about my limitations and when I get a little bit lucky in life. And uh, I also know when people are more talented than me in other areas and I try to be respectful of it. Uh, like I think Russ is a way better stand-up comedian oh, than me. Come on. I think David Tell is obviously, the, 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 I, I like hanging out with guys who are better than me at stuff because it's uh it's it's good it's good for me to do that uh because you got to remember your limitations it's like the look i have that belushi look really helped me in life and i'm not trying to sound humble i'm trying to sound realistic and if you stay in touch with that i don't think you'll ever like you know become an ass and secondly i think you'll get work from it because you know i'm not going to do certain things some people think they're going to do everything you're not going to catch me doing an album like anywhere uh <laughs> you know or ever taking a video shoot like marcus schenkenberg um <laughs> But, you know, and I think Howard, uh, okay, I mean, I was jealous of, of the fact that people thought I was funnier than him. Whether I was or not, I think he was jealous that anybody did. And the fact that they the, had the Pelican thing in and the fact that I wasn't fitting in with his new thing, heroin con conveniently did the job for him and got me off that show. He was going to have to get me off the show. Mm. There's no way he could do a Gwyneth Paltrow video with me sitting there like a slob, you know? Right. Uh, and uh, every day... All the callers did was talk about me. And again, it's not because I'm some talent. It's because he's in a boring relationship where they eat almonds and hot water every night. <laughs> uh, Freddie has a beautiful family. Gary, too. Robin is a, a, a lady who's into art. And Benji, no one understands him. You know, <laughs> I, I'm the guy who's a heroin addict on the road doing stand-up. Who's, who's story? Who's weekend? Yeah, you want to know right? about? Yeah, of course. Uh, and he thought that was dominating the show. And then this fucking stupid poll they took, who's your favorite character on the show? So I trounced them. <laughs> uh, you know, think about that. And uh, you're great on the show, no doubt. Yeah, but I think it's it's definitely again. I, I I think that too, and I'm proud of that. But it's also a very much I was one of them. I'm a fan that got, and he the analogy he used. Anybody would hate him. He said, "I'm a genius." You guys aren't a genius. Artie's not a genius either. You can relate to Artie. Go have a beer with Artie. I don't give a shit about it. I'm not a regular guy. I've never been a regular guy. Mm. Basically, making fun of the people that made him a billionaire and saying, if anyone's not cool enough to go to Jennifer Aniston's wedding with me, I don't want to talk to you. Right, right. Uh, and uh, so that's it. So I think I think he had that kind of hatred. It's me, funny which, that you said that because I thought his whole angle was that he was a regular guy. And, and, he was at the beginning, yeah. you know. And there's nothing wrong with growing, but I mean, come on. You're going to be that vicious to, you know. Come on, man. Yeah. Uh, and he never was really, you know, Russ. He was never a guy that uh, played ball or he, he couldn't really talk like that with, with the, the fellas. He didn't hang out with anybody. Right. He's very effeminate, actually, you know, but very heterosexual. Right. But, uh, you know, watches those geeky shows. Right. I never, you know, he would watch. He thought I was watching The Bachelorette when a Yankee <laughs> game was on. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. You know what I mean? It's like, Howard, what American are you Idol talking about? Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And I would make sports references that would go over his head, and uh, <laughs> people would email in going, Howard, you didn't get that thing, he said. And I'm like, no. Oh, oh they're coming to get me. Anyway. I, so that's why I think Sam knew that, and play, that's why he he was really trying, I think, to fuck with me for how, to get a good with Howard. Yeah. And uh, it was vicious on a level. It made my mother cry. Wow. wow. You know, and, what? The script? The script, yeah. So your mother read it. I, yeah, because she knew something was wrong with it. It was in a drawer, and she took it without me knowing. Oh, good. She knew I hated it. Wow. Wow. Anyway. Who the fuck got all Sam's money, by the way? It's Jennifer Tilly? <laughs> well, her only advice, don't do that stupid cartoon. <laughs>